morning. Uh, it's good to see everybody, and good morning to those of you out there um, watching this through the air. Uh, what a beautiful gift God has given us, the, the ability to reach those that aren't here with us. Um, so praise God for that. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody, and and as you can tell, Joe and Bev aren't with us today. Hello out there if you're watching uh, on your vacation, getting some rest. Uh, much needed, I'm sure. Uh, let's prepare our hearts with the prelude and allow God to work through us. everything. We thank you for salvation through your son. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity to reach others. We ask, Father, that you open the minds and the hearts of those in the congregation today, all of us. Um, we ask that the Holy Spirit speak through Steve today, um, that it may reach us. And Father, we ask that every noise we make be pleasing unto you. Amen.
Is that okay? All right, first of all, I want you guys to stand up and give a standing ovation to Miss Andrea. For it. She is wonderful singing. All right, how's everybody's week so far? Good. You guys ready to start wearing more cold clothes? Or warmer clothes, I should say, because it's getting colder outside. All right, guys, long time ago, I saw this when I was at a children's chat, and I wanted to do this with you. And it's hopefully it'll work out. So we are going to use this jar, and this jar is going to represent us. All right. And in life, we sometimes get focused about all the little things that are going on or things that bother us. So you guys have got to participate, and you have to tell me some things that some of your worries, some of the things that take up your time of the day that you probably shouldn't worry about or things that bother you. For example, one of mine is making sure everybody always stays healthy. All right? So I'm going to put that in my jar. So you guys have to share things that you worry about. What? You got yeah, Everybody's got to participate. <laughs> if not, you have to dance. Oh, no. <laughs> you don't really want to? <laughs> What's something that, that you think or that bothers you? I know the older ones. You guys can give me examples. Jasmine, what's something that bothers you at school that you worry about? Um, not doing your homework. All right. What about you? Getting good grades. All right. That's two of you. Getting all your schoolwork done on time. Missing the bus. Oh, you have? I haven't known about that. Well, thank you. All right. All right, Bo, what do you got? I think probably for you, you'd be worried about the iPad battery dying. Okay. All right. Unless you got a better one. Are you taking that one out? You got to think of a good one then. What? Getting good grades, okay. All right. Do you ever worry about anything? Not really. I like your attitude. I think I should have more of that. What about you? Do you worry about anything? Do you worry about ever being hungry? Okay. <laughs> Mason, do you ever worry about maybe if your toys break or something you know doesn't go right or you lose something? Oh, right, okay. All right, we're down to you, Harper. What do you worry about? If you don't get enough sleep. Oh, I like that. All right, all right. And then there's other worries, you know. We worry about just day-to-day -day things, making sure that, you know, as a parent, you know, do my kids have clean clothes and uh, making sure that they stay fed and making sure that they're around good friends, right? and then making sure that they have a good influence around them. And the next thing you know, we are filled up. But what are we missing? Oh, because God is a huge, it's not going to fit. I don't know, what do you think? It's not gonna fit, is it? I can't put the, the, the jar on the lid of it, can I? But what happens if I take all my worries out, and I put God in first. Okay? If I put God in first, and then I put all my worries. Does it fit? Yeah. So who should we keep in mind first? God. God. All right? Or just Jesus. Okay, and so there's just a few scriptures, and I'm pretty simple, but one of my favorite scripture comes from Jeremiah 29, 11. It's one of my favorites. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. So all of our worries mean absolutely nothing because God's got it taken care of. Another one is Psalms 56, 3, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. So in my jar, who should I put in first? God. 
Psalms 121, 1 through 2, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And so one time, somebody told me something really important. And I actually ended up marrying the guy. So can anybody point to who am I? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder, you know, what was I thinking? But so instead of telling God how big our problems are, how about we tell our problems how big our God is? Right? Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and pray today, okay? Repeat after me. It says, Dear Jesus, thank you for always being there for me. Thank you for always reminding me that you are bigger than my problems. And I ask that you continue to guide me and allow my light to shine. In your name we pray. Amen. requests via text. Uh, I'll read through some of those and then we'll pray if there's no additions. Um, of course, the family of Tony Beaner and Bruce, the loss of their son. Um, we'll keep them in our prayers. Pastor Judy, uh, still struggling through COVID, along with uh, Linda's friend Evelyn. Um, and somebody said Bob and Sheena. Sheena was COVID posi positive, but not sure on Bob. Um, Sharon still dealing with some arthritis, and her son Joe getting through his struggles. Um, Lucas of Donna in the back, um, his COVID test was negative, which is good. He does have another virus, but the COVID portion was negative. Um, the family of Sandy and her mom's passing, and generally our country uh, needs prayer pray for peace around the nation. Is there any others to add? All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today broken in many ways. We ask for healing, Father, as a country the div divisiveness uh, that we see daily breaks our hearts, Lord. We ask that you mend our hearts, allow us to bring people together uh, day to day on the small level where we are. And Father, we ask that that trickles its way through the country all the way up to our leaders from the city, state, and our nation, and across the world. We know what your love can do, Father. We also pray for Tony and her family. Having to lay to rest one of your own is never easy. Father, we ask that you surround them with your glory and your love. Surround them with people who care and can comfort them. Father, we ask for COVID to go away and all the problems it brings. We pray for Pastor Judy. We pray for Evelyn and Sheena that they pull through stronger than before. We ask that you place people around them to care for them and help them through their isolation because, Father, that cannot be easy. We ask that they turn to you in their time of need because you can provide everything. We 
pray for Sharon and her aches and pains through arthritis. And we ask that you be with Joe. Um, continue building his strength. And Father, we pray for the family of Sandy and the passing of her mother. Be with them, Lord. Help them through their their time of discomfort and pain and suffering. Knowing all well that her mother is where she needs to be with you, Lord. And we praise you for Lucas and his uh, test results. But we ask that you continue to help him heal through his other virus and be with those around him and, and be the assurance he needs. Father, we ask all of these things in your son's holy name. Amen. The scripture today is from Matthew 7, verses 7 through 27. Ask, seek, knock. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you, for this sums up the law and the prophets. The narrow and wide gates. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. A tree and its fruit. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, we did not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. The wise and foolish builders. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who builds his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Thus ends the reading of scripture. on all right great hey, hey thank you scott that was good i know that was a lot of lot lot of scripture reading and thank you thank you julie that was a great great, great children's chat there um yeah yeah i appreciate uh bev asking me she asked me a few weeks ago if uh she said she, said she was going to be on vacation and asked if i if, if i would fill in and it's always it's always a joy and i'm, I'm always blessed to come here and i know she said that 
you guys, I guess, just finished a series on Daniel, I believe, and she was talking about Daniel, the resolve he had, and, you know, Daniel's just a great, a great story. Um, and I was thinking on what, on what to teach on, and one of my favorite books of the Old Testament is Nehemiah. So I thought, well, I'll teach on Nehemiah because it's a great story about, you know, when somebody came and told him the walls of Jerusalem were torn down and everything was in ruin and, and they were in danger of being overrun. It kind of reminded me a little bit about our country. You know, a lot of things are in ruin. So I thought, you know, he went and he, he prayed. He cried out. He, he sought the Lord. And then he went and, and got some help to build the wall. So I said, man, that may be a great story about, you know, we need that to build up. But then a couple of weeks ago, Lisa and I went to a FCA Fellowship of Christian Athletes, which I'm involved in. They had an Ohio staff meeting in Columbus. And the Cincinnati area director talked on talked on those verses and I just you know I guess that's plagiarism but whatever but you know so I thought man that that sounds great that I would that I would like li would, would like to teach on that and his biggest thing was what he talked about it's a new day because the way to do ministry has changed you know um, FCA it's, it, it's changed a lot I can't get in a lot of schools you know can't meet with teams and I know Mike and Scott know, know that you know the restrictions that we have to have to, to meet in the school but also churches about a lot of things different. You know, you're online. A lot of churches didn't di didn't meet for a while. Social distancing, masks. There were new ways to do m ministry. But also, each and every one of you in there, you are ministers also yourself. And it's a little different with you. You know, you, for several months, you may not have been able to visit people, visit family. But we are all, as children of God, we are all ministers of the gospel. Everybody we meet, from our family to our coworkers to our friends, person at the gas station, at Walmart, whatever we. We are called to minister to them in, 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 in some way. So it just uh, called me that I said, this would be a great verse to teach on. And then I, I don't know if you have, yeah. And please read and follow all instructions. Originally, you know, as you read those verses, they're pretty simple. And that, the title of my sermon was going to be pretty simple, huh? So I thought that didn't sound real good. And since I'm not an ordained pastor or preacher, never went to school, I'm sure they have a class where they say, how do you name your sermons? You know, I'm sure it's a whole day class where the pastors taught how to name their sermon. I think it's the same class where they put the stuff on the billboards, you know, the school billboards they have. But since I didn't know that, I had to come up with something. So it was please read and follow all instructions. And I have a question here. How many people, I think everybody falls in one or two categories. You buy something or you get a gift, whether it's a toy or a piece of furniture or a tool, how many people get everything out, lay it all out, separate everything, and then read the instructions once or twice before you put it together? How many people do that? A few of you. How many people, and I know Reams is one of these, I'm sure, you get it, you pull it out, you put it together, you have the instructions off to the side. If you come into a tough part, you may look at the instructions, or after it's over, if it's done work, you have three screws and two bolts left, and the thing wobbles and doesn't, you know, doesn't work right. Then you go back to instructions. How many people do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Normally I read instructions, but um, the other day, well, I bought my grandkids a basketball pole, you know, the thing that, you know, the adjustable pole with the thing you put sand in the bottom. And I kind of read the instructions somewhat. You put the bottom pole on, then you put the second pole on, but before it says you have to put the top pole through the bottom and adjust it up. And I either missed that or I did, wasn't thinking. Put the bottom pole on. I put the second pole on. It says, make sure this is right because it will not come apart. So I pounded it on. And then as I got to put the top pole on, it was fluted. So it didn't fit. So I said, well, I'll just take it apart. I got a couple um, pipe wrenches. Tried to twist it, pull on it. They weren't lying. And it, it did not come apart. I beat on it. I put a chisel on there, scratched it all up. So then I had to take that top piece, which was fluted, get down on the ground with a hammer and round it off a little bit, put it in, it just fit. And then I had to get a block of wood and pound on the end of it to get that thing in. So I wasted a half hour, 45 minutes, just because I missed this one little piece, piece of instruction. I didn't tell my wife or, or, or the kids that. I thought, oh, it was a piece of cake. But I'm sure we've all had those kind of horror stories where you get something together and you look back and you say, man, I can't, 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 can't believe I forgot that. So that's why, you know, in the Bible, please read, which we all do, but follow, in, follow instructions. 
And uh, what, what, what I'm going to talk about now, it's going to be, it's kind of like five Ps. And this is uh, pretty early in Jesus' mi ministry. It's right after, the, you know, the Beatitudes, you know, which says, Blessed are the poor, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are the meek. And then Jesus gets in here about talking about, you know, his interpretation of how he came to fulfill the Old Testament, which says in Matthew 5, 17, do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Well, pretty much he just gives like a, his, his take or how he's fulfilling some of the Old Testament prophecies. You know, talks about salt and light, uh, murder, adultery, divorce, an eye for an eye, love for enemies, give, giving to the needy. Just as paragraph, this is one, one of his longest sermons. Talks about prayer. That's, what, that's where we get the Lord's Prayer from fasting, how to store up treasures in heaven, and like, you know, as, as, as Julie talked about, do not worry, you know, a, a whole thing on that, you know, we, we, we're not supposed to worry about judging others, and then it get, get, gets into Matthew 7, um, where, you know, ask, seek, and then knock, and the first P is pray, you know, the first thing in that, because that, that's what this is, pretty much just talking to God, ask, and it will be given to you, seek, and you will find, Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks the, 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 the door will be opened. Um, and I think on this, God is saying, ask in a way that you, you expect an answer. You expect him to answer the way, the way you ask. And I know sometime in my prayer life, a little, a little bit meek in there. Sometime when I knock, I'll go, hey God, you don't mind... Um, I like this, but I know you're busy. I know you're this. You know, we may not say it like that, but sometimes we come to God kind of like not really expecting him to answer it, you know, a little, a little, a little meek. And when we come to him boldly, he wants us to be bold and persistent. He, he doesn't want us to be arrogant or cocky like he owes us something. You know, God doesn't owe us anything. He loves us. He wants to give him those gifts, but he also wants us to come, to, to, to come and ask us. Um, and, and I think we need to, Sometimes we want to pray and God's will be done, but I think we need to be specific sometimes. You know, uh, uh, some general prayers are okay, but I think sometimes if there's something you like God to do, I think he wants this to be specific. You know, we need to know what we want. God already knows it, but I think he just wants us to ask, to ask him and be, and, and, and be specific with it. Because um, I know kids are like that. When they want something... You know, it's like, gimme, gimme, gimme. Well, we don't want to be like that with God. But they know, when they look at you, they expect, if they want this cookie, if they want to watch this TV show, they want to go outside, they're going to look at you like they expect you to do it, right? I mean, they don't, they don't, want, they, they don't really want to take no for an answer. So, you know, kids, ki kids are like that. I think we need to be there with God. We, we, we need to be, be specific, ask them. Um, we need to seek God with all our heart. And I think we need to bring, we need to bring some passion some passion to our prayers. I know sometimes mine, I just feel like I'm just going through the motion. You know, I pray, but I need, I, I need to bring that passion to it. Excuse me. And uh, one more story. Um, when, when I was in school uh, back in the 70s, and some of you may, may be able to relate to this, my parents, we just had one car. You know, so any kid, you know, we just had one car. Mom and dad used it. If the kids need it on the weekend, they need to ask. And my mom told me this story so many years later, and I didn't realize it when I was in high school. I had two brothers, and if they wanted the car for a date or to go out with some buddies, they would get up, they would wash the car, they'd put gas in it, they would ask dad early in the day, hey, dad, can I use the car tonight? And more than likely, they got it. For me, I would wait all day, and right before I needed it, I'd come up and say, Dad, I need to use a car tonight. I suppose you're not going to let me have it. And I wouldn't wash it. I wouldn't put gas in it. And more often than not, I didn't get the car. And it never registered. I was pretty dense. And my mom told me years later, if you would have just asked early, been, been specific, and did what your brothers do, you would have got it. So I kind of look, and I think sometimes we're like that with God. We don't expect him to, an to answer those prayers. But like I said, just know what you want. Be specific and keep, keep knocking, keep knocking. So that's the first P, pray. Um, the next one here is going to be, it's going to be verses 9 through 12. Which of you, if a son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? 
If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. And that's pretty much a golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do, do unto you. And I think, as Scott shared in you know, the prayers, we need that now more than ever. You know, we need to do, do, do that for other people. We need, we need to show an abundance of grace and mercy to people we like and people we don't like, people that agree with us, people that don't, that don't, that don't agree with us. Um, and then the a verse that tie, t- ties in with this is back in James. James 1, 19 and 20. And this is something I know we, we, we could all take heart in. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. And I know it's easy now to get angry, angry at people, angry at the government, because you have to wear a mask, you can't get together, you can't play sports, you can't do this. You know, it, it, it's easy, I mean, to, to just... Sometimes the first thing we do is to get angry, but just says, be slow, slow to angry, quick to listen, quick to, to listen to the other people. N- give others the benefit of the doubt. You know, that's, that's a, tough, a, a tough thing to do. You know, as they walk a mile in their shoes, you know, s- think, think, think what they're going through, through. And it says here, you know, God provides for us, and we need to kind of provide, provide for others. And that's part of what ministry is. You know, you, you provide the needs to others, and... One of our main jobs or responsibilities as a Christian is to help bring other, bring other people to Christ. Um, we need to listen, listen what other people need, you know, whether they say it verbally or not. But I said quick to provide a path for others to get to Christ. And I sometimes we put a lot of obstacles in it. And I know I catch myself doing that too. Well, if you change your language a little bit, if you wouldn't hang out in bars, if you wouldn't watch this stuff, if you wouldn't do these things, then it would probably be better for you to, you know, come to Christ, come to church, you know, like we have to clean ourselves up before, b- b- before we come, and uh, I, I think we're all guilty gu- 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 of that to, to some degree, and I go back to kids again, we have a woods by our house, I take the grandkids in there, you want to try to let them do their own thing, you know, climb or jump over something, but every once in a while, if they get stuck, you give them a little boost, or you lift them up and, you know, take them over, or when they fall, you, you know, s- you know, you pick them up sometime, and as, you know, remove some of the obstacles, or you see so- a kid going to something where it could be dangerous, you move it, you know, you, you know, you, you move it, and I think we need to do that to our fellow man, remove some of those obstacles, not that we water down the gospel, or allow, or, or you know, condone sin but we just need to remove some of those obstacles we need to provide a way provide a way to those people to get them to christ whether it's to get them to come to church get them to come to your bible study or or, or whatever you have so that like i said that second part is provide and then and then the third part here is verses 13 and 14 about the gates enter through the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it, but small is the gate, and narrow is the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Um, and some other verses say that it's the highway to hell, you know, the wide high, high, highway to hell. Um, and this is, this, the P in this is pursue, and I'll, and, and, and I'll explain that in, middle, in a minute, but why do so many travel that broad road? You know, why? Because they don't know better? I mean, it's easier? Um, there's peer pressure, it's, uh, they just follow, follow, follow the crowd. And I know the road is what we normally focus on here, but, I, but I'm looking at the gates. And I kind of pictured myself, if I was in a field or a parking lot, and I wanted to go somewhere, get out of there. There's a wide gate over here, it goes to a six lane highway, everybody's going 100 miles an hour to get out. Or there's a little narrow gate, you gotta go single file, it goes to some small little, small road. You know, you can't get out as fast. I said, well, me and most people, we're going to take that road. We need to get somewhere, so we're going to take that big gate to get to the big road to get, to get out, out, out of here. And the Bible says that, that the wide road is, is road to destruction. And um, the thing that really should alarm us is it says many and few. 
and I'm not a math whiz, but I think if you had 100 people, many, 51 isn't many, and 49 isn't few. I don't know if it's 60, 70, 80, 90, 95, whatever it is, but many, many people, which means most people are on the, on the path, path of destruction. Very, very few are on, are on the path, path, path to heaven. Um, and that goes back to that, you know, remove those obstacles, help them, help them get, get, get there. Um, and, and I think the thing we need to pursue is righteousness. And, you know, we need to guard our own hearts. We need to pursue ri- r- righteousness. And that goes back to the page before. It, it, yeah, it was in that song, which Jenny picked out, which was perfect. But, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. That's the main thing we need to do. We need to sink, seek God, seek his kingdom and his righteousness, be right with God, right in our actions, right, right, right in how we live, and that's how we draw other people to us. You know, yeah, so I think that's pursue. We need to pursue, pursue righteousness. All right, getting down to the end here, all right. And then the next thing is we are protectors. We are made, made to protect, protect our family, protect our friends, protect our protect the people we go to church with, protect ourselves, and that's why this uh, tree and this fruit is so, is, is so important here. Watch out for the false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every tree bears, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus by the fruit you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you, away from me, you evildoers. And that's one thing I learned from reading the Bible, is God is pretty much black or white, yes or no, left or right, this or that. You know, there isn't like a lot of A, B, or C. You know, God lays it out pretty plain, plainly. You follow me, you follow the instructions, you do what I want, you have a blessed life. You don't, you, 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 you don't. And then that verse at the end there, um, when when I had youth group many, many years ago, this one girl came up to me and she said, that is the scariest verse in the Bible. And it's that one about, you know, didn't I do all this stuff? And then I tell them plainly, I never knew you. Get, a, get, get away from me. And, and, and I had on here that, um, like I said, we need, to, we need to guard our own hearts. We need to protect the people that, that, that's around us. At the end times, it talks about the false prophets. We hear a lot of that now. E- everything's permissible. There is no sin. You know, whatever feels good for you, do it. I mean, it's, it's just, it's just all, all over. There's no absolute truth. And, and the prophesy in here, it's not like you're predicting the future. It's just like a message from God. That God has spoke to you or just, sh- just sharing su- something in the Bible. But I kind of rewrote that, that, that one verse. Um, you know, Lord, didn't I go to church every Sunday? Didn't I? help out with the Wednesday night meals, didn't I get involved with Operation Christmas Child, didn't I volunteer downstairs to that, didn't I go to FCA, didn't I give money on Sundays, didn't I do this, didn't I do this, and th- th- this and this, and I got thinking, I said, don't show up on Judgment Day with your list and then tell God, here's my qualifications, yeah, th- I, I, I get it, and you know, it, and, and it talks about that back in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 3, starting 11. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, stones, wood, hay, or straw, his work will be shown for what it is. Because the day will bring to light, it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. If he has built, survives, he he, who receives the reward. There's other places in the Bible where, you know, that list made of paper is just going to be burned up. You know, it's something that you, your foundation, your stone, your gold, your, 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 your silver, and that, is, and that is just who you are, you, you, you know, your righteousness, but that qualification of everything you did, 
It's just going to be it, 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 it's just, just going to be trash to God if it talks in there about filthy rigs. You know, work, works are just fil- filthy rigs. Because when we meet Christ, we should be we should be different. And I and there's and there's one more story, and uh, hopefully it makes sense. But there was two guys they was going to meet at, for breakfast. One guy was running late, you know, 15, 20, 20 minutes late. He finally got there, and his friend asked me, he said, "What happened to you? Why why are you late?" He goes. I was walking across the road and I got hit by a logging truck. A semi truck just smashed into me and smashed into me, so I'm late. The guy said, How how could the logging truck hit you? You don't look that different. And and what that means is if you get hit by a logging truck, your appearance is gonna change. Everything's gonna change about you. The outside, the inside, you're gonna be completely different. And that's how it should be when we we meet Christ. You know, we should be completely different when I mean when yeah, when we come come into contact with Christ and accept Him, we should be completely different inside and and outside. We should have some type of glow about us. I don't know if I'm glowing up here or not, but you know, we we we, we should be completely different. And I know that logging truck story was pretty stupid, but hey, it it, it, it sounded good in my notes. But yeah, but but I said we should be completely completely different. It's impossible to meet Christ and not be changed. So we'll get it, we'll get off the logging truck one. All right, now now the last one. But 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 then it talks about here is a fruit. You know that's how you know people. You know it talks about you know if you guys want an apple, you don't go out to a, a pine tree. You know you know it's the same thing by how people we ought to know them by 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 their fruit. And the last one is, and I think it's persevere. And it's going to be verses 24 through 27 here. Therefore. Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, like that, is like the wise man who built his house on rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew, and it beat against the house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put in them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rains came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against the house, and it fell with with a great crash i said i was i was in construction for a lot of years so i know about building you know about you know you got to have a good foundation i know several of you are in it i know mike and scott and some other people that that, they've done any any kind of construction work the foundation is the most important part of any building whether it's a small building or a big building whatever you do you have to have a strong foundation anything in sports that's pretty much what most sports are your foundation your core you know, from, you know, the middle you buy, you got to have that strong foundation. That's why most athletes lift a lot of weights and they do a lot of the agility work and core work. You need to have, you need to have a strong, strong foundation. And then storms, and I got this from Scott, spoke at our high school FCA the other day and, and did a great job. And he talked about, you know, different hardships and things that, you know, people, people go through and, and the testimony. And every, every storm we have, every hardship is different. You know, yours is not the same as mine. The person next to you will all have those different hardships. But we can't be comparing ours to somebody else or our testimony to somebody else. But one thing, I think everybody's in three places. You're either in the middle of a, sh- or in, in a storm. I said the middle, but you might be at the beginning of one, in the middle, towards the end. You're in some type of storm or something going on in your life. You know, we had those prayer requests. And I'm sure if we go around, everybody would have several prayer requests if you really thought thought about of something going on in your life or somebody you know so we have that storm we're in or you just got out of one you know your life was awful and you just got out of it and now it's starting to get better or your life's great now but we all know that storms are inevitable something something's going to happen sorry folks but i i believe believe you knew, knew that anyway so there's those three things and then john john talks about that what Jesus talks about in the Gospel of John, John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this will, world you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. Jesus says you will. I don't think there's anybody in, in, in here that's never went through life without some type, some type of trouble. And the thing about those three things, you, some of you may be in the middle of all three of them. You got out of something, you're going into something else, you're in the middle, mi- mi- middle of something else. It, it, it is one of those things that does, that does happen. Um, and there's this great song 
So my casting crowns is pretty old. Praise you in the storm. I don't know if you ever heard it, but if not, is it Google? Is that how you do it? You talk, yeah, whatever you do, talk on your phone, talk to somebody. Praise you in the storm by casting crowns. It's a great storm. And that's tough to do. I mean, man, it's easy to say, man, when something happens, I'm going to turn to God. I'm going to get my Bible. But that's tough. And, and I know that, you know, some people, they find it easier to pray and read the Bible or get close to God when things are going bad. And some people find it easier when things are going great in their life. And when things are bad, they, they, tur- they tur- turn away from God. I know sometimes I slack it. When things are going great in my life, I don't get in the Bible as much as I should. I don't pray as much as I should. Because, man, I think I got it all, all, all figured out. And then when the bottom falls out, then, then you run to God. God doesn't care when you come to him, but he just wants, man, I, I just urge you, just be consistent. No matter if things are going great, things are going bad, think, think, things are in the middle. Just keep turning to God, getting, getting, getting in the Bible. And uh, I do want to, I'm, I'm getting very close here, but, and I've learned this too, the time to build a strong foundation is before the storm hits. Because I've been out many times when it's raining and trying to pour some concrete or do some building or something, it doesn't work. You know, do it, do it before, not during the storm or dur- dur- during the monsoon. You know, start, get that built beforehand, get that strong, strong foundation. And I talked to a lot, a, a, a lot of young people, we talked about convictions, and I know Reem has talked about this too. You know, make that decision, we tell these young kids, before you're alone with your girlfriend, before somebody offers you a drink, before somebody dares you to drive 100 miles an hour, you know, have those convictions what you will and will not do beforehand. And it's the same with that, that foundation. Don't wait till something bad happens and say, man, now I got to get, get, get in the Word, you know, just like I said. Build that foundation by getting in the Word, praying, Surrounding yourself, self, self, self by, by, by positive people here. Um, so, like I said, those th- those five P's: pray, provide, pursue, protect, and preserve. And I just want to thank you guys for allowing me to 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 share with me. And uh, Joe and Bev, hello, how you doing? All right, hey. Thank you, Steve. Um, closing, closing hymn is 368. I think you guys are going to know this one. And it's really a good ending to what Steve just said. Um, if you'll pay real close attention to these words, you know, the refrain is, uh, on Christ, a solid rock I stand. We're going to sing all these. So if you'll stand up, get some energy behind it. Come on.
dear God, I just thank you for each and every person in this congregation. And as they, as they leave here, let them just continue to, uh, to, to go to you in prayer and give, give you praises for the great things you, you, you do in their life and continue to pray, pray for themselves and the other people around them. I, I also ask that you just uh, continue to provide them with blessings and realize how much they, they, they provide you, or, or, or you provide them with so many great, great things, Lord. Let them continue to protect, protect their loved ones and guard, guard their own heart. Let them uh, continue to pursue righteousness uh, and pursue, pursue, their, pursue their neighbors to give them a clear path to you, Lord. And finally, and, 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 and I believe as important as anything, to persevere, Lord, through the, through the good times and the bad times we can just uh, continue to bring more, more people into your kingdom. Lord, we love you and we ask all these things in your name. Mm -hmm. Thank you.